stories of people like going into the venue the day before because there was a basketball game or whatever. Right. Buy a ticket to the basketball game and bring in all their equipment and stash it away in the venue. The next night they come in for the concert, they just reassemble their stuff and they've already cleared security. Coming to you live from the heart heart drive. Disciples of Conjecture, rejoice and settle in for another grooming episode of Frorubus Pursuits. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fruitless Pursuits. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, today, what are we talking about? We got a little uh, blast from the past, really, right? Yeah, it's so I was just thinking about like the cross lane of culture that we're in at the moment and how technology is intersecting with that and how that you know has kind of come to music and as i was thinking about this i saw a picture of axel rose being arrested in like i don't know 92 or something like that yeah and he's wearing his pink his own use your illusion t-shirt um his hands are behind his back he's smiling and it's just like a moment that only someone with a lot of money and fame would be enjoying you know (laughs) that's right yeah and so, yeah. um, I, so I started like he started entering my the, the frame of thinking about this, and then I thought of this concert um, that is super infamous from '91. It's like um, Missouri, I think it's St. Louis, and Axel. You know, it's like this huge concert. It's like Motley. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, that would because that would be terrible. It's it's Guns N' Roses. I think maybe Faith No More was opening. Definitely Guns N' Roses and Metallica. That's, those okay, are the headlines, right? Right. right. It was so it's a huge, huge tour, concert. Yes, and Faith No More was originally the opening act on that. Day. I think at some for sure on some point in the tour. Not sure who it was yeah. for this night, date, right? Right. But so it's not too far into the set. Guns N' Roses are playing. Um, they're playing Rocket Queen actually, and Axl Rose wearing this black fur coat, uh, combat boots, uh, spandex shorts, and like a you know like a, a Nazi a, officer's hat. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Leaps into the crowd like he's he yells at security. Get that! Hey, get that guy! Yes. And then he. So this is what everyone saw on the news. He, hey, get that guy! Okay, I'll get him. Like he doesn't even wait a second. Right? Just t- taking too long. Jumps into the crowd. Turns out the gentleman that was there had this a video camera. And in the nineties, mm-hmm. a, a normal like a home video camera was huge. And this right. is re- this is reported to be a professional video camera, which would be even so long. I mean, you probably could have seen it if he, this guy was in the back of the you know audience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is huge. So Axel Rose jumps into the crowd, gets a hold of this guy, slugs him, and and as security is probably hold, has him in. You know, it's not like the guy was a threat. Axel Rose yeah. says it hits him, right? Right. And then security drags this guy away. Guy. Yeah, super tough guy. So, yeah. just to round out the story, so everyone knows. Um, the Axel gets back on the stage and says, you know, um, thanks to the bad security, I'm out. And like throws his mic down, right? And like storms yeah. off. Something of like that. Don't, don't, not exact quotes, right? Mm-hmm. The, all the, the house lights come on and the crowd starts like throwing their, chi- the chair, like unbolting the chairs from the, this, the auditorium, throwing them, you know, at the stage, just anything that was and was not nailed down. Yeah. was being thrown at the stage. There's this famous bootleg of the crew who were like up under this area of the Metallica stage filming this. And it's just hours of things being pelted. I mean, I think if not the National Guard, like the state police are called in, in like riot gear. Yeah. Excuse me. And then like get everyone out. So it would not be the last time that Axel Rose would, call it, would cause a riot, but... Um, no, and, and, and so when you bring that up, I find it interesting because I did not know that that particular moment that we've all seen the video of him, you know, angrily launching off the stage into the crowd. Right. I did not realize that that was the same, uh, the same event or the same concert that led to the the riot at the St. Louis St. Louis Civic Center or what? Right. Whatever yeah, it was. I, mean, I think you would have at the time. Because, you know, that was all, you know, at the time we had MTV News and even the news would run segments of MTV News. So, you know, sure. we, have, we have all been talking about it at the time. Uh, and, and at the time, you know, we were what, like in our early teens. So, of yeah. course, we would be glued to Mid- MTV. Mid-high school, probably. Right. Sure. So we would have been talking about that. 
Yeah. And and it, at the time it was so they were synonymous events, and then somehow they kind of got pulled apart from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, in in like the you know the zeitgeist because I didn't either. Yeah. And it wasn't until going back to prepare for this that that I that I remember that. Yeah, but, that's really um, interesting. It is interesting, and the, and the, like the linchpin of it for me is like anyone watching this who's been to a concert in the last like <laughs> twenty years, right? Yeah, you've been at a concert full of cameras that were recording video and still images. Sure, and, it's and audio. almost impossible to mitigate at this point, right? I mean, Unless you go in, they have get, the bags, right? Right, right. but you but, usually see those more uh, in theaters. You know, comics a lot of times will. Uh, We'll use those, um, but certainly not for like a a crowd of what thirty to fifty thousand people. Something yeah, I like mean, that. Music venues. I mean, it's almost unheard of for uh, a a music concert to restrict photography at this point. I mean, you know, if you have old uh, concert tickets from like you know ninety yeah. eight and before. You will see it's printed right on there. No photography, no recording. Yeah. Um, not just, I mean, it may, even if that's on concert tickets now, or you sign something in that, you know, that huge digital list. I mean, yeah. everyone has their phone on them. I mean, yeah. it, it. So it, to me, the the striking difference is just like that fact that we went from zero or just like one was enough to you know have Axel Rose come out the guy who. Yeah. You know, after he sued Axl Rose for two hundred and something thousand dollars, ended up getting like one hundred and sixty. Um, so, bad. I mean, imagine that behavior. You just couldn't have it. Like, it, it, there's no place where. Where would you start? Yeah, <laughs> front row. Although there is, um, there is a recent story that kind of parallels that, and it has to do with um, when Danzig did Bonnaroo. Of course. I, Apparently there was some kind of uh, tantrum that he threw. And I don't remember whether it was they were doing a misfit set or it was like a Danzig set. I don't remember the details of it, but I know that, um, you know, particularly in that crowd, in that Bonnaroo crowd, like that was a novelty. Going to see Danzig was a novelty. It was not yeah, yeah. what it's not the like majority people like, of those people were there for. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it, exactly. To hear that one song pretty right. much. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> um, and apparently he threw a fit about people recording the the set on their phones and stuff. It's like, dude, you're at an open air festival. What, what are we gonna what, do? Where <laughs> what is the expectation? And maybe that's like you know, kind of just a symptom of somebody that uh, had not quite bridged into the new the new era and the yeah, way things are. They, like like he didn't get the way. memo or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody has a phone and it's just kind of part and parcel <laughs> now. But well, um, well but I, interesting I, parallel nonetheless. <laughs> Well, I, you know, you're, you're right because, you know, for anyone who's been to Bonner, and I mean, at this point, festivals like that, and even most concert venues sell VIP, like backstage side access. So like what used to be only like friends of the band or friends and family, you know, or like, you know, whatever famous people area, you can now pay, you know, an extra thousand bucks at Bonnaroo and like be able to sit there, sit on the stage, whatever. And so you now have those like casual fans there and you're right that bonnaroo crowd like first of all at this point most of them i don't know who the bonnaroo crowd is now but you know oh well i think it's pretty much the same i mean you know it's 20 somethings who have a broad musical or limited musical spectrum that just want to go get fucked up you know what i mean um so i think because of that you're like you said it's like it's an it's a novelty. They're there yeah. to see Danzig as this like they're they're there to get that shot, and maybe that's yeah. the thing that pissed them off. Everybody scrambled with their cameras at that moment, you know. Right. Um, I, I also, you know, I think for a, a, someone like Danzig, the people that would normally go see him or the Misfits if he's with them are going less novelty and more nostalgia, and so yeah, they may they're, be, a, they're a legacy act in. In, in those terms, right? That's right. And so those folks may be there with a little more, more kind of sense of uh, reverence, right? So they're, mm. they're, they may, their cameras and phones may come out, but they're going to be a little more like classy about it, perhaps. I don't know. No. If Danzig comes out and does a misfit set, everybody's got their phone out. That's just, okay. you know what I mean? Sure. Like even, you know, we all know the kind of meme about like, look, you're never going to, it's like shooting, 
video of uh, your Fourth of July fireworks. Right. Like nobody's going to watch that video. You're not going to watch that video. What are you, What are you doing? Um, but it's, it's funny it's, that you say that because last night I was coming home, I was walking my dog, nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night, super dark. But there's like heat lightning. And so I like, and I had this really great view of the clouds and they were just kind of like lighting up briefly. And so I took a video of it. And as I was staying there for like a minute, um, cause I couldn't stop cause it was like, Oh, but I'll, the next one, the next shot will be really good. And then I finally stopped and I was like, I could probably put together something really nice if I edited that. And I just, <laughs> I just right away deleted but it from my I'm phone. Not yeah. Gonna. Yeah. 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 You're no, exactly. You're right. I mean, it's, <laughs> you have all these hopes. It's just, it, we are, we are the perfect, like we are hoarder culture in so many ways yeah yeah and it's made it easy and you know look i i'm as guilty of it as anybody uh i do try to limit like if i'm gonna take a a video clip i might shoot like the first 15 20 seconds of a song or something Mm -hmm. um but again i never go back and look i I probably have stuff like that but more and more as time has gone on i've i've you know, the futility of it has dawned on me. Right. And so I, I try to be a little more like present and in the moment, you know what I mean? Instead of waiting, like, are they going to play the song that I've been trying to, you know, record? <laughs> well, you know, you're so right. A bunch of false to... starts on your camera roll. Yeah. Well, I was just looking at you and I, the, the the video of you and I, as, you're, as you're saying this, and I was like thinking with every gray hair that we, uh, uh, gra- <laughs> we graced ourselves with, we, yeah. we learn a little bit more about uh, life being temporal and, you know, all that stuff. And and I think it's it's just that, you know, you're at a live thing, you're seeing a band. And when you put that screen in front of you, it's almost like, you know, I, I had the same, fe- and the same feeling happen to me at a concert. I was recording something very briefly. And I was just like, I am looking at the screen, looking at the thing that I want to see. What am I doing? Yes. You know, yeah, you're just putting like, a barrier re- between yourself and the experience totally like, in a way. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And and it's like throwing that that third wall up between the, the experience and, and why do that? Yeah, well, I, I told you yesterday one of the things that I've started doing at shows just as a goof um, is if the person in front of me is filming, particularly mm-hmm. for like a long time, they're like filming entire songs or trying to film the set or whatever, I will take my phone out. And I'll put it over their shoulder and just film their phone. <laughs> and eventually, you know, you feel like somebody, that presence, feel the presence, yeah. right? And they'll turn around and they'll realize what they're doing and shamefully, like, put their phone away. It's actually really <laughs> funny. But uh, <laughs> so my camera roll has a bunch of that. Like, yeah, you know. I love that, actually. You know, it would almost be worth, you know, no one will appreciate that now, but in like 20 years, there would be this yeah. archival, like, Remember when people used to, yeah. and now we just record them with our, our neural processors, so it's no <laughs> right. Deal. Your neural link, yeah. Or we just Maybe. simulate into the um, into the concert, um, yeah. It, and that I guess that's part of it too. For me, is it's almost as though that was a mile marker in the development of all those things because you know bands, it, you know, the nature of what the bootleg is has completely changed. Sure. I bet if you ask the average 20 year old, they'd say, Oh, it's like a bootleg. I bet their definition of it would be different. You know, yeah. it's some sort of, you know, live uh, version that the bands put out, you know, because there is almost no incentive for. No, it's really hard home. to monetize that now. Yeah, because the band is going to instantly, you know, probably already has something like that. No one holds on to songs, you know, well, like. No, and it's like the, the quality is generally dog shit right so you know back in the day when somebody would actually go through the trouble of sneaking audio equipment into a concert um you know there's stories of people like going into the venue the day before uh because there was a basketball game or whatever right buy a ticket to the basketball game and bring in all their equipment and stash it away in the venue and then the next time you know the next night they come in for the concert they just reassemble their stuff and they've already cleared security etc um yeah. And people did some really sophisticated things to like create, um, create these bootlegs. But like even, you know, fan re- fan recordings are one thing, and they're generally not good. Even if you've got great equipment, because right. there's no way to like block out the chatter and people singing along and stuff. You know, 
Occasionally yeah. it works, but generally speaking, no. Um, the other thing is the soundboard stuff. Right. But frequently soundboard recordings sound like shit. So it's it's really it, it, we're really at a point now where it's so prevalent and there's so much bad stuff out there. Right. And I think most people are just much more willing to be like, oh, I'm going to get this official bootleg that's released by the band or the label or whatever it is. And there's been a, a little bit of uh, artistry in putting that together as yeah. opposed to. Well, it, you know, I think a lot of the the evolution of technology relative to live recording has evolved from – you know, and I, I, and you're just roll your eyes now, but a lot of the evolution of live re- concert recording has come from the Grateful, Grateful Dead, Dead. Yeah. and not just them, but they're there because they would have whole sections of tapers. You know, this is something that anyone who knows the band even now, you know, and they have an older brother who has some cape, tape case full of these like tapes that people trade. Yeah. Um, they had a whole section where they let people set up. And so like, and because yeah. they have just these like the dorkiest fans in the world, there would be you know, really techie people who would come up. I mean, Owsley, uh, famously, the bear, you know, um, built their sound systems and developed all these double phase microphones that we're using right now, you know? Yeah. Uh, And because of that, the band started wanting to have good live recordings that they could sell. Almost all of the bands like that, Pearl Jam included. um, I can't think of any others that, and usually because the band does something different all, all the time, so fans are interested in what might what else might have happened. But right. any band like... Uh, and, well, Dave uh, Matthews did it, too. Well, yes, and I, I will never listen to those, unfortunately. No. But um, no. I uh, had a good friend, though. He ran a site where people posted... This is like early internet. Sure. Right? Where people posted uh, various live Dave Matthews recordings. Yeah, I mean, well, it's any band that's got a big following is going to have super gay, but whatever. I I I wish I couldn't tell you all about this this this. uh, There's a there's there's a Wilco one too. I mean, there are things that happen within those that become kind of uh, lore relative to that or fan, you know, important. Um, So you know, and then you have enough fans, which most of those yeah, man, that do. China cat. To, I know you, Ryder, on the '72 San Francisco show was fucking you know, epic, if you need to, man. I, do, I, it, Fuck anyone, off. Uh, well, Fuck off. <laughs> well, you, you see, that's the problem, and that it was that alone that kept me from liking the Grateful Dead for years. Yeah. Like just that, like you'd be at somebody's house buying weed from them, and they would be like, "Oh, <laughs> hey, man, if you're having a bad day, bro, you know, grab." Yeah. Listen to Dick's Picks number four. It's 42 minutes in, bro. And that's whoosh. You know, just shit like that. And you're like, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's that kind of stuff. But anytime you, you get into anything to any certain level of, of nerdity, those kind of things become important suddenly, you know? Right. Um, you know, because you're into the nuance and you're only detect that nuance in, in long terms. I mean, bands like, you never hear that like Red Hot Chili Peppers. No one's ever like, oh, dude, have you heard Amsterdam? No, because and... they probably play the same set every night when they go out on tour, right? Not just that. It's just like... <sighs> <laughs> I mean... Well, you know, look, like, I'm not going to argue also, also... in favor of the Red Hot Chili Peppers here, but um, I'm sure there's some diehards that would oh, love absolutely. to Oh, you know. absolutely. Absolutely. I just don't think they're multi-generational. You know, I think most Red Hot mm. Chili Pepper fans are, like, big fans now, like, in their 20s or whatever, or they, they were a big fan for a segment. Like, you and I, if you were, if, and if anyone wants to go back, we did rate the Red Hot Chili Pepper records. Uh, yeah, that's true. So you could go back and listen. Um, but uh, for us, like, that Mother's Milk, uh, you know, Blood, Sugar, Sex, Magic is, like, the high, you know, water mm. arc. Yeah. So the newer records don't really appeal to us. You know, they're, they're not doing the same thing. I mean, they're they're – not necessarily reinventing themselves, um, though they, they keep these energy currents of, of modern in their what they're doing. Uh, and maybe that's why we don't like them, Jason. We're just not cool enough. We're not tuned in. That's to, probably to now. what it is. I um, mean, that and Anthony Kiedis can't fucking sing, but you know. He also looks like somebody who would drive a van and try to pick up little kids at this point. Yeah, you know, he looks his, like a weird his new pedo. look is like, a little is a little weird, but yeah, um, yeah. I, I feel like we're getting off topic here. So we let's do that. Let's circle back to our buddy Axel uh-huh. and just speculate like, okay, so that is 
a, a great encapsulation of like the extreme side of how people felt about um, boot, bootlegging. Is it really bootlegging? I don't know. I don't know what that guy's intention was at the show, but if he had pro equipment and was video recording the show. Yeah. Um, he was hoping to like, you have to, to sell that. You have yeah. to think that his intent was some, somehow to monetize that. Absolutely. Um, now what, where is the bootleg market? YouTube. It's, well, it's okay. So it's YouTube and YouTube will often, you know, uh, flag stuff and kick it off. But it seems that pirating music has really gone by the wayside with streaming. Um, people are still using, uh, what's the, what's the thing you can, Cody player yeah. on your, on your fire stick. And there's yeah. still ways that you can stream TV shows and, sporting events and you know movies and stuff like that quote unquote illegally right um i don't really i mean maybe i'm just out of touch but i don't really see much of that in terms of music anymore like you I said think... you can you can find most stuff on youtube and it's posted by the label or if you have spotify or any other other streaming service it kind of it kind of makes it obsolete. It makes it obsolete. It also takes, you know, it's, you know, not, it was like maybe three months. It was during the Drake, uh, Kendrick beef part. Mm. You know, a record company is like closed. They folded in all of their subsidiaries, all of their minor labels into under their big houses. They yeah. made all of those executives like eight, you know, high falutin and A&R people like fired 50% of their staff. So, I mean, we saw this compression of the music industry that no one was talking about because we were talking about Kendrick and, and, and Drake, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what that really was was in, in a way for the top executives, the owners, to keep their revenue streams the same as they were, right? Yeah. They realize it's all changing, so they're changing. But the artists still aren't making dick because we're not buying music anymore. And the way we buy it, like you're saying, it's through streaming services, and they don't get any of that, you know, especially right. now the way – and and if people are correct, what we will see is streaming services from each big record label. Label. Soon. Yeah. So yeah. pretty soon they're going to they're gonna fold out Spotify in some ways, and we're going to see mostly, a, you know, Warner Brothers. Right. You know, you know uh, one of the things that you didn't see outright – I guess it technically is a bootleg, but um, like leaked releases – that's yeah. something that I think really affected the music industry. And it's almost a foregone conclusion now, right? That somehow totally. if you're releasing a new album, that's maybe that's why somebody like, you know, Taylor Swift just doesn't tell anybody it's coming out. And all of a sudden, Hey, I got a new album that day. Well, that's the way to do it. But I may mean, imagine like, that's easy for like a brand new band to do mm -hmm. much harder for someone to like Taylor Swift to do, because there's so many people, run their mouths about you and so many people that work for you that run, you know, right. So it, I can't imagine what that looks like while she's doing it. Um, uh, but, but stuff is not getting leaked from pressing plants. No, the because way it, that it used to, because well, think about it. you. It go, goes to streaming like three or four months before the record comes out. Usually. Yes, so exactly. So like they, well, it's well, they not start dropping the singles plant. like Metallica did six, seven months prior to the album. release. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's not having as much. I, I would be willing to bet there are still those instances, like, because you will have a record. Like, for instance, the way, you know, Queens of Stone Age did it, their records weren't ready, but some of them were out already by the time they released to the streaming platforms. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, you didn't get the, if you if you ordered the pre-order, it had already been listened, you'd already been listening to it for a couple weeks um, by the time it hit your doorstep. Yeah. Because of the pressing releases and all that stuff. But it's definitely changing. I mean, it still happens. It's just different. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. If you have anything to add to this uh, discussion in terms of how technology has changed the way that you consume music, I mean, that one's obvious, but there's a lot of, like, smaller uh factors to that we'd love to hear about it because we know we didn't catch everything but um that's a big part of this is you joining the discussion so 
Thank you for being a part of this, and we hope to see you again real soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.